how do we as individuals protect ourselves? Do we have an economic revolution? Vote with our dollars? Do you think it's Bitcoin? Uh, because I want to ask you, I see Bitcoin is good, you know, an anarchic, open uh, cryptocurrency. My problem is J.P. Morgan Chase, as you know, in 1999 had a patent on it. How do we know they're not behind it? How do we know they don't discredit the whole thing by blowing up their own system? Or how do we know they don't take it over if it isn't theirs? And it does have a little bit of a Farmville casino gulag look to it how everyone's out there mining it and like mad if you don't totally lay down and love it i mean i'm just kind of ambiguous on bitcoin and have a bad feeling in my stomach you have a good feeling i guess a tingle up your leg uh <laughs> if uh, you were uh slime ball chris matthews well you you run ads for bitcoin on your show so presumably if you believe in your advertisers you would believe in the Bitcoin story. No, no, no. They're on the network ads. I, I, any ad you hear, I endorse. I have my advertising. That's part of how I'm paid by the network, and then they have theirs. But I'm not I'm not here running. I let you come on and promote Bitcoin. I, I'm, I'm really trying to understand it. So you heard my question. Yeah, okay. So um, I agree that it's uh, difficult to – it doesn't have a warm and fuzzy quality about it that you can easily – and embrace it's very kind of difficult to fathom because there's many moving parts to it but it's based on encryption and encryption gave us edward snowden who i was a tremendous whistleblower should have been time person of the year and revealed an incredible amount of documents that are still being revealed that are completely playing havoc in the halls of power around the world that's all based on encryption you've got guys like kim.com in new zealand who was taken down by the MPAA with a uh, SWAT team assault. No, I get it. These are revolutionary Guy Foxes in every sense of the way. Okay, so let me carry this through. So encryption is the key to understanding why what makes Bitcoin appealing. And it's based on an encryption technology. And the inventors of it figured out that to make sure that these coins were not double spent, you could incentivize people to prove that the coins were all being accounted for by giving them a piece of the coins as they were being created, so to speak. And then you end up with this currency called Bitcoin. And initially, it was a curiosity amongst the technology groups. But since situations like Cyprus happened, where you had the bail-ins that you mentioned earlier, People are looking for a place to store value. Gold and silver are problematic because, number one, the prices are being manipulated through artificial selling. And it's hard to move a lot of gold and silver. It's very heavy and obvious to see. Where you could put $100,000 on a thumb drive or in a mind wallet or a paper wallet and walk across any border and take your money with you. That's what a lot of Chinese people are doing who are escaping China. Sure, sure. Or, or a few collector coins or some art that the idiot TSA doesn't know is worth $5 okay, million. Okay, so let's go back, go, go into this JP Morgan situation because I I agree with you that that is problematic because they came out this this week and said that they were renewing a patent that they have on virtual currencies. As you know, I'm the only one in the world that has four patents on virtual currencies, particularly the key patent five nine five one seven. And you are the creator of Bitcoin. No, I'm not. Bitcoin is an, an evolution <laughs> in virtual currencies from what I did in the 90s to now this cryptocurrency. It's a really remarkable break and, and an achievement in the field of virtual currencies. But I know this area very well. Oh, and. <laughs> so you've got uh, this uh, J.P. Morgan that's trying to resurrect some old patents. And I, this is what I see is going to happen. They will, J.P. Morgan and others, will try to stop Bitcoin by engaging in a patent war or a copyright war, the same way the record industry has tried to stop file sharing of music by attacking people on the basis of their violating copyright law. So I think J.P. Morgan and these other banks will use patent law to try to disrupt the flow of Bitcoin. They don't have a case. It's their, their patents don't really compete with Bitcoin. But, it yeah, but look how Congress just passed a law banning uh, the printing of 3D guns. I mean, I really don't see how they can do that. Right. I don't see them. They're using technology to enslave us, but I don't see them being able to block us using technology to empower us, just like they can't shut down the alternative media. That only makes us that much hotter. So so how do you see them trying to win? Well, I think they'll try to attack the point, the merchants and the exchanges by, and you, and you know, they just passed, so they're in the process of passing these global trade deals like TPP, Trans-Pacific Partnership. That gives corporations... If you looked into this, I'm sure you covered it on your show recently. Above government power. 
but totally above government power. So they can say that this patent that J.P. Morgan claims to have dominion over is now going to be applied through the corporate powers of TTP globally. And anyone who tries to do a merchant deal or an exchange, we're going to attack them uh, using claiming a patent of violation. It'll be a completely spurious suit. It'll be a patent troll suit. There'll be no merit whatsoever, but it'll, it'll be backed by billions of dollars. And remember, in the case of copyright, the MPAA, they chased Chris Dodd of the MPAA, hounded Aaron Schwartz to the point where he killed himself. That's They'll stop Oh, they really killed him. He was getting married and everything. They killed him. His father said at the funeral that the government hounded my son to death. So anyway, that's Chris Dodd. He's a, he's a, he's, a, he's a murderer, but he's typical American politician. I don't think anyone should be surprised about that. That's what they. Well, I want to say this: the ruling elite are are getting more and more lazy, and that's why they were going to end up having a giant war. I, I mean, bottom line, where do you see this going? Because Bitcoin has survived. I want to go to calls. It has survived some big plunges to go back up. Uh, I just see it like the tulip mania or something, where it's getting a little bit foaming at the mouth here. I, I think the analogy to tulips is incorrect. Uh, tulips, uh, you really can't make the comparison at all I, I, for a lot of reasons. But for the, the price appreciation is really, really the first inning. Okay, well, what about of, derivatives? Of, of I, mean, I mean, what about derivatives? I mean, I get what, what gives Bitcoin its value. I know it's an agreed upon mode of exchange. And so I'm all, I want to shadow the power of the Federal Reserve. It's just that intrinsically, people say, well, are you for gold back? Or are you for fiat currencies? Well, I can debate both systems openly. I'm not wedded to one or the other. Anything's better than what we've got right now if people are educated about it and the amount of it's controlled and it's transparent, right? It's, the Bitcoin is a Bitcoin protocol. If I held in my hand 100,000 emails and I said, Alex, what is the intrinsic value of these emails? Depends on what's in them. The answer is zero. That has no intrinsic value. No, those they're, emails, they're, those emails, if it's actual email data or the email... Well, no, it may be who, who you're contacting. They're, they have no intrinsic value. They're just, it's just, it's just bits and bytes and, and, and electrons. There's no, there's no intrinsic value. But in the network of email, uh, it, to be able to communicate information around the world and collect information, et cetera, it's worth incalculable amount of money. Yeah, okay, there you Similarly go. Similarly with Bitcoin, uh, the, 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 the intrinsic value a case has to do with the protocol, which is applied across the global network, incalculably valuable as a protocol to send money, for example, is the most uh, widespread use of the Bitcoin no, protocol. So the value is the, is the encryption. It is the network, the encrypted network, and the ability to verify transactions. So it's the protocol. So you have to look at it like email, or you look at it like a P2P file swapping. That, that's one way to look at the intrinsic value case of Bitcoin. And it's it's like it's like the internet in 1994. People How said, high do you think Bitcoin's going to go? How high do you think Bitcoin's going to go? I, I think the smartest guy in the Bitcoin space is a guy named he's a, he's the uh, in, in Stockholm, Sweden. He's founded the Swedish Pirate Party. His name is Rick Fokvinja, and he made the case that Bitcoin could capture between one percent and ten percent of the global forex market. That's the foreign exchange market which it has an implied value per Bitcoin of between 100,000 and a million per Bitcoin. You said he was. He is. He's, a, he's the smartest guy. Well, I want to get him on. Yes, you should. He is a fantastic guest. Well, give me his contact info, I'm Rick sure. Rick Fokinia. He's a fantastic guest. He's, he's one of the earliest supporters. He, he invented the Swedish Pirate Party, and he's a great guy. There's a couple of other people you should have on, like, No, you know, no, I've read it. Well, send me a list. Tell me who you recommend Jones, we have on, Kaiser. Yeah, he Forbes magazine. He's an excellent spokesperson. Roger Ver, who's the bit Jesus in, uh, of Bitcoin, who gave away Bitcoin for years just to get people to understand what it's all about. He, he just gave a million dollars away to uh, the Mises Institute. Beautiful. Yeah, and folks are buying Lamborghinis or whatever with them now. It's, it's, it's amazing. Why just let the Federal Reserve guys and a bunch of old bankers have this power? Yeah, we want Federal Reserve. We don't need them. The InfoWars crew absolutely loves coffee because we love being awake. And I am somewhat of a connoisseur of coffee. So many times you go to a restaurant or even to a coffee shop and the coffee tastes like garbage. And in all the different coffees I've tried, my favorite is grown in the high mountains, in shade, Arabica, on the border with Guatemala in Southern Mexico. 
by the Chiapas farmers. I make sure we've done the research. I make sure it's the very best product that we can offer you when I put my name on it. And I believe, and it's my taste, so you may differ, that this is the best coffee in the world from Southern Mexico. Wake Up America Patriot Blend, 100% organic, Arabica shade grown. And then we have the Immune Support 100% organic coffee infused with a special type of mushroom known to boost the immunity. This coffee is seriously so smooth. I normally have to douse my coffee with cream and sugar and cinnamon and all kinds of tasty treats, but this, I drink this black. It is so good. Well, that's why I like it, is that it has a kick. It has really good caffeine in it. It has a good, clean wake up that lasts for a long time. Doesn't give me a headache, but it's so smooth. It's so delicious. Just try it out for yourself. I'm telling you, this is my favorite coffee. We went through a lot of trouble to bring you this. Just try it, and I think you'll be hooked like we are here at InfoWars. Well, folks, find out for yourself and support the information war today. It's all available at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. We've got uh, the great Max Kaiser with us for five minutes of the next segment. And Stefan Molyneux is coming on to break down the news with us. And there's a lot of it. And if you'll buy that, throw in Obamacare free. Obama keeps his bodyguards. You turn your guns in. Doesn't that sound like a good deal? Ryan in Kentucky, you're on the air with your question or comment for the world at large. Go ahead. Yes, sir. I'd like to raise two points. Number one would be for any and everybody listening to this broadcast borrowing money to pay debt is about as idiotic as sticking your hand in a fire my second point is this for some time now people like yourself and others have reported that there are foreign troops training inside the United States borders it's all over the place. They're just acclimating us for occupation, yeah. Yes, sir. Several men and I, men of, let's just say, experience, have taken it upon ourselves to investigate this in our own state. We have personally witnessed close to 3,000 Russian troops are training in the state of Kentucky. We have also witnessed no more than 40 so far, but UN troops that are training in Kentucky. People need to wake up and look around. You know, I want to, you should shoot video of that, put it on YouTube, and it become a big story. Now, they're training Russian, German, you name it, and then training them for urban warfare in America. And in NLE 09, the Pentagon admitted uh, that FEMA drill that they were training foreign troops for unrest in America. And we have deals with Canada and Mexico to help them as well. And it, it really is just a slow incremental acclimation. Thank you so much for the call, sir. And good point on the debt. Uh, Max Kaiser, I've seen cases where they have like Ukrainian troops in Scotland running checkpoints. What do you think all this is really about? In Paris, they have Romanian police that are stopping Romanian uh, so-called gypsies. Uh, because there's an influx of them. So they allow, they're allowing the Romanian police to set up shop inside Paris, inside France, So, which is a remarkable development, I think. I think uh, Mark Carney is a Bank of Canada central banker. They just dropped him into Bank of England. It, it, it buttresses your point about this new world order, about this globalist agenda. So the elite in these different countries are just plug and play. They're just snap and go. They just drop them in from any country to any other country. There's no sovereignty anymore. It doesn't make any difference what country you're in. You can just drop in elites from any country to any other country as long as they do your bidding. Continuity of agenda. Exactly. Let's jam in one more. Well, you put it well, Max. William in North Carolina. Go ahead. Quick question or comment. My question is about CISPA numbers. I've been uh, seeing on the net where they're uh, being used on birth certificates, social security cards court cases you know max is a real expert on this i appreciate it let me jump in because we're going to break max they do use individuals in countries in the imf and world bank as collateral correct <laughs> well inadvertently we're all collateral for the central banks one way or another but i've heard you quantify this before because i've seen it where 
they call us human resources and they really are assigning whole populations on through debt to this uh, too big to fail, correct? Yeah, all, all of your Twitter activity is now collateralized and used to f underwrite debt because they can say it has predictive qualities which they can underwrite. All right, five more minutes with Kaiser. Stay with us. Alex Jones here with a very important announcement for Truth Seekers. We've carried a lot of amazing films and books over the years on the online video bookstore at Infowars.com. And out of all the titles we've carried, one stands out because it is just so chillingly convincing. And that's Dreams from My Real Father by Joel Gilbert, available at Infowars.com. This film exposes the fraud that Obama is like nothing I've seen. If you want to know who Obama's real daddy is, this is the film for you. Don't forget, your purchase supports our broadcast and our growing media network. You'll also find at InfoWarsShop.com, None Dare Call a Conspiracy by Gary Allen, the book that woke me up. We're also carrying Behind the Green Mask, UN Agenda 21 by Rosa Corey. This book is coffin nails to the globalist takeover. The Greater Good, the most professional and up-to-date film I've ever seen exposing the scourge that is vaccines. These titles and a lot more are all available at InfoWarsShop.com. Final segment with a few final calls with Max Kaiser. Then we're going to have another guest coming on. And a, a drug ad I want to play on here and get Stefan Molina's take on. We're going to go back to a few callers here and continue with others on in the next hour. I guess... Uh, Will, Greg's up next, and then Dan, Danny and a few. No, no, Danny's not up next. It's uh, William, and then I'm totally confused now. No, it's Greg. I'm seeing he's been holding the longest, and then it'll be Joe. Uh, but uh, Max Kaiser, anything else you'd like to add? Important points that you've forgotten uh, to get out there to folks. Well, you mentioned earlier the uh, group of people. I just want to reiterate this point. Mark Faber and others that are talking about 2014 being a, a watershed year to the turning point and market chaos. And I just want to reiterate that I'm putting my, my flag in the ground and saying that Bitcoin is the phenomenon happening this year. We, this is in, And next year, we'll look back on 2013 and realize that Bitcoin was the black swan. Bitcoin was the disruptive event that totally transformed the global economy. And we, uh, we won't be able to make that statement until this time next year, looking back and say that's truly what happened. But I just want to make sure I go on record as saying that I believe that all those people are correct is that I but I don't I believe they're missing the true elephant in the room. And that is Bitcoin. They're missing the Bitcoin factor. I believe they are because um, they sense that there is this epic change coming. I've talked about it on your show many times, as many have. Uh, but I think that the emergence of cryptography, as it has changed the surveillance industry, changed the global alliances, is bleeding into currencies. And that's a huge event. It's the biggest event in currencies in, in hundreds of years. Well, when you've got 85 to 1, 100 to 1, 200 to 1 profit to loss ratios, uh, or, or, or you've got stock ratios where the company's making no money, but it's valued 100 times its supposed profits. Uh, we're in deep trouble. Here's that Dave Stockman clip uh, that we talked about from Bloomberg. And the thing is, now what we talk about is even invading uh, dinosaur media. Here it is. All right. If ever I had a guy, you're my budget guy, tell me your impressions after combing through some of the numbers of what has been put forth by both parties yet to be voted on. Well, first, let's be clear. It's a joke and a betrayal. It's the final surrender of the House Republican leadership to beltway politics and to kicking the can and ignoring this budget monster that's hurtling down the road. They're busting the caps, and it's totally unnecessary. It's going to add 70 billion to spending this year and next year, and then they're going to pretend to save it in 22 and 23. All right, that's way, a way CNBC clip They've where he's saying something similar. Let me let me actually uh, read what he said here. He said. Uh, on Bloomberg, uh, it's in our article, uh, market valuation has lost every anchor of the real world. Uh, you want to say that this kind of speculative froth that you get at the top of a cycle where valuation losses any anchor in the real world, loses any anchor in the real world, that video is up, uh, up on InfoWars.com. This is what we're talking about here. So they can't criticize Bitcoin claiming it's not connected to anything when what they're pushing is connected to a bunch of debt that we know has negative value and was based in fraud, Max Geyser. Well, they're basing their analysis or their value structure is tied to fiat money. And fiat money, by definition, has no intrinsic value at all. 
the dollars in your pocket are worthless, except for the paper that they're not printed on, as Gerald Salenti likes to say. The Bitcoin, however, by comparison, is as you'd have to make the comparison to gold or silver. It has real, genuine, intrinsic value, and there has value on top of that as a means of exchange and as a store of value. But uh, he's absolutely correct. Stock market and the bond market in particular, that's the key, is trading at 300-year highs in the UK and trading at 240-year highs in the United States. We're out of time, the, Max. Will okay. it completely go 1929, or what will the ongoing implosion look like? Slow molasses or lightning? <laughs> Buy Bitcoin. That's my answer. I know, but I understand you've said that, but I mean, how bad do you think it's going to get? There, it, it, it's either going to be a complete and utter uh, write down of this bad debt in a deflationary depression, or they're going to go be like China and print a trillion dollars a month, and then it's hyperinflation. And I think the, the answer is thing. hyperinflation. I don't think they're going to take their foot off the accelerator. Max Kaiser, thanks for the time. We'll talk to you soon. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at Infowars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the Infowars Nightly News, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones Radio Show live as it happened. So check it out, Infowars.com forward slash show.